within the Department of Homeland Security of surveilling and censoring online speech and then trying to cover it up. The committee obtained non-public documents from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, uh, and they reveal that the agency considered creating an anti-misinformation rapid response team, and they actually moved their censorship operation to an agency-funded non-government organization. The committee also finding members were concerned that it was only a matter of time until they were caught and scrubbed uh, their websites of any reference of domestic surveillance and censorship activities. Joining me right now is Florida Congressman, a woman and member of the House Energy, Commerce and Agricultural Committees and the Subcommittee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government, Kat Kamak. Congressman, it's great to see you this morning. This is unbelievable that we keep seeing evidence of surveillance of just, you know, regular folks in America. What's going on here? Well, Marie, it's good to see you, too. This is the industrial censorship complex at work. When you have an agency that was just created in 2018, mind you, it has rapidly morphed into something that is so unconstitutional, so beyond the pale, that now this it's our duty to basically dismantle it. It has gone so far beyond its original mission set of cybersecurity, which, of course, is a major concern across the board. Now they're focused on misinformation and becoming the arbiters of so-called truth. This is why the work of the Weaponization Committee is so, so important, because when the pillars of our constitutional republic, pillars like an independent press, pillars like freedom of speech, pillars like a blind justice system begin to crumble, that's when people start losing faith. And this entire yeah. system is based on faith of the people. So we've got yeah. a lot of work cut out for us. This report is damning. Yeah, all, all, all of this as we get bombshell whistleblower testimony once again. Uh, President Biden is still claiming that he has no idea about Hunter Biden's shady foreign business deals. Reporters, though, are grilling the White House, and it seems to be that the dam is breaking about Hunter Biden and uh, the influence peddling, although the White House doesn't even, uh, you know, have any indication that it cares. Hunter Biden was schmoozing at the state dinner last week, uh, and he was schmoozing with people from, you know, the director of national intelligence, even after he agreed to a plea deal. Watch this. In light of some of the recent legal controversy, if the president communicated to members of his family not to conduct business on White House grounds. I'm not going to speak to anything that is related to this case. As you stated, there are uh, we've had uh, when it comes to ethics, we take that very, very seriously here in this administration. And Congresswoman, she says they take ethics seriously. <laughs> I'm sorry, Maria, I didn't mean to laugh out loud, but <laughs> I hadn't heard that clip, and that's just laughable. They take ethics seriously. We have evidence that proves that Joe Biden was in the room as Hunter Biden was shaking down a foreign national in exchange for access. I, I mean, give me a break. He was at a state dinner after being <laughs> given a sweetheart deal for lying on a background check for a gun purchase, which I thought that the Biden administration was going to crack down on this, that they were really serious about making sure that these background checks were tight. Keep in mind that Hunter Biden has a rap sheet going back to 1988, the year I was born. When you have a rap sheet that's 35 years along, that tells you that this person is a liar, a crook, and definitely should not be representing the United States at a state dinner with one of our most important uh, partners in a very critical region. This is absurd. We see that the dam is breaking, as you said, Maria. Every yeah. day, every week, the evidence but comes out, and they're, there's they're no hiding from you. It. They're still stonewalling yeah. you, Congresswoman. You know that. I mean, look at the oversight team. The oversight committee has real bank records, evidence that shows millions of dollars went to these 20 shell companies, uh, which ultimately uh, the money made their way into Biden family accounts. I mean, it's in plain sight. The media will not report it. You've got the bank records in the oversight committee. And yet what's happening? Nothing. Well, and that's the thing, Maria. That's where I go back to where is the press, the independent press, asking the questions? You have mainstream media outlets who have covered zero of the things that have been brought to light. You have the president of the United States saying publicly uh, that he sold state secrets. 
he sold state secrets. Now, no one is addressing that. And when you talk about it, they're like, oh, it, it was just, uh, he was joking. I mean, this is absurd. When the pillars of our republic start to crumble, it is our job to realign where our founding fathers intended for us to be. And we have a constitutional oversight duty. That's why I think the yeah. work of the oversight, judiciary, and weaponization committee are so important. We're going to continue to release more information. And I feel that this is all the more reason why taking down the industrial censorship complex is important, because if the mainstream media won't cover it, we, the American yeah. people, we will. Well, we're going to follow it for sure, Congresswoman. The former chief medical advisor to President Biden, Dr. Anthony Fauci, is now starting a new job as a professor at Georgetown Medical School. He'll start next month. The school announced he'll have a role with their infectious disease division, Congresswoman. And here, too, we've got no accountability. Anthony Fauci and all of his rules around COVID, uh, many of which now we understand uh, he tried to, and the entire administration tried to work with social media to censor important information that we all needed uh, during COVID. A and again, here we have uh, Fauci getting a, a new job at Georgetown as if uh, his bad behavior uh, didn't, didn't matter. <laughs> oh, Maria, I wonder if his first course is going to be Grifter 101. Maybe mm. it's going to be a oh, failed pandemic response 101. All I know is that any student that is actually paying money for these courses, they are going to be at a disadvantage because they are going to be lied to. They are going to be uh, told a, a number of mistruths because at the end of the day, all we know about Fauci is that he's a liar, that he is in it for himself, and that he failed miserably as CDC director in handling one of the worst pandemics the world has ever seen. Yeah, and he still won't admit that it escaped from the Wuhan lab. Congresswoman, thanks very much. No. Good to see you this morning. Kat Kamak joining us. Uh, we will keep following all of that. Thank you. Tragic loss of beloved newsman Tim Russert, his son went on a worldwide journey to find himself. I struggled with his grief for a long time. How Luke Russert is honoring the legacy of his father when we go person to person. leading political opponent, the DOJ tries to literally put you in jail and give you prison time. If you are the president's son, you get a sweetheart deal. I'm very proud of my son. What do you say to that female independent suburban voter who feels that way, to win her back? First of all, I won in 2020 by a lot. Last night he said the reason he didn't give the documents back was because he's just so very busy and he didn't have time to respond to a grand jury subpoena because he needed to get his golf shirts and pants out of the box. Hello, I'm Weijia Jiang in Washington. Welcome to America Decides. Hunter Biden has agreed to a plea deal following a federal investigation. He has agreed to enter guilty pleas on two misdemeanor tax charges and admit to felony gun possession. The president's son will avoid prosecution on the gun charge if he follows conditions set by prosecutors. A federal judge in Delaware must still approve the agreement. Multiple prominent Republicans have claimed the Justice Department went easy on him. Catherine Harridge, who is CBS News's chief investigative correspondent, joins us now. Catherine, today you spoke to the chairman of the House Oversight Committee, James Comer, and I wonder how this plea agreement impacts his ongoing investigations into the Biden family? Great question. A short time ago, we spoke with the Republican chairman of the House Oversight Committee. He's been running these investigations into the Biden family business dealings with entities overseas. He told CBS News he's disappointed with this plea agreement, given that it only involves two tax misdemeanors. 
my first question is, what has the Department of Justice been doing investigating this for the last six or seven years? We all knew he didn't pay his taxes for, for two specific years. But what we've uncovered would suggest money laundering, would suggest tax evasion, would suggest racketeering, many serious crimes, including not being a registered foreign agent. So uh, we're very disappointed in the Department of Justice. We think this is another example of a two-tier system of justice in America. In response to the Republican committee's interim findings, a White House spokesman said they've shown no evidence of wrongdoing by then Vice President Joe Biden. We jump. And is there anything else uh, you can tell us about what they plan to mm -hmm. do moving forward? Great question. Uh, we asked the chairman of the committee whether this changes the scope and the trajectory of their investigation. And he told CBS News that one of his immediate plans is to call the U.S. attorney in Delaware, David Weiss, to Capitol Hill to testify and explain the status of that probe. As chairman, will you call the U.S. attorney in Delaware to testify. I think that the U.S. attorney in Delaware will either testify in front of the House Oversight Committee or the Judiciary Committee. He needs to explain whether or not his investigation is concluded or, as he put in that statement when he says the investigation is ongoing, he needs to be transparent with congressional investigators as to what exactly he's investigating moving forward. And the reason all of that matters is that we had these two statements from the different teams. Hunter Biden's legal team said it's their understanding that this year-long probe, years-long probe into the president's son has been resolved. But the U.S. attorney, David Weiss, put out his own statement that said simply this investigation is ongoing, Weijia. So there is even discrepancy about Correct. the end result here. Correct. Okay. Well, we will continue to follow it. I know you will. Uh, thank you very much, of Catherine. Course. And for more on this, I want to bring in Nicole Killian and Nancy Cordes. They join us right now. Nicole is a CBS News congressional correspondent, and Nancy is CBS News's chief White House correspondent. Uh, Nancy, I want to start with you because the president did speak about this for the first time since we learned about his son's plea agreement. No surprise that it was short, but, you know, he has been so careful about wanting to draw a separation between anything having to do with the White House and the Justice Department. He is also a staunch defender of any family member. So what do you make of what President Biden said today? Well, Ouija, he uttered exactly six words, I'm very proud of my son. Uh, and he did that here in San Francisco a short time ago in response to a barrage of questions from reporters who wanted to get his take on this plea agreement as he spoke at an AI-themed event here in San Francisco. And uh, all he would say is that he's proud of his son, and that was it. And frankly, that's all we expect to hear from him in the near future. He has been, as you pointed out, so careful uh, when talking about this issue for a number of reasons, chiefly uh, that he doesn't want to inject it into the bloodstream any more than it already is. He doesn't want to get into a tit for tat with Republicans over his own son, and he doesn't want to appear to be trying to influence the Department of Justice investigating his son. For, so for all of those reasons, he has really remained mum. Uh, he put out a, a very terse statement this morning saying that he's proud of his son and then reiterated that in person. And now he's uh, off uh, conducting fundraisers here in the Bay Area. And, uh, and for now, uh, unless he is pressed uh, again, that's all we're going to hear from him about it. And, Nicole, of course, Republicans were quick to say that it's actually impossible to separate who Hunter Biden is with his plea agreement. Um, they are calling this a sweetheart deal. And I know that you spoke with Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy today um, about that. Can you tell us more about what he had to say? Yeah, that's right, Weija. Well, Speaker McCarthy did characterize this as a sweetheart deal for Hunter Biden, and he continued to talk about uh, the same thing that Chairman Comer talked about, that he feels that this is a two-tiered justice system. But I asked him, how does he explain that, considering the attorney overseeing this case against Hunter Biden was actually a Trump appointee? Take a listen. What you see is, if you are the lead candidate against the current president, you get indicted, but there's jail time proposed. Here you are, the son of the president. We watched other Americans with some of these same judgments or the same challenges they had before him, that they would have jail time. 
Now, the speaker says that this plea agreement raises more questions and said that House Republicans will continue to follow the facts where they lead. He also says that because Hunter Biden has now pleaded guilty, he feels... Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.